Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Air Jordan 37 low. And here's all the reasons you may or may not wanna buy them. Here we go. Now starting off in the uppers, their shape is pretty similar to the 37, especially kind of the slope of the shoe. The forefoot of the shoe kind of has the same shape. However, th that's really where the similarities stop. Now on the 37 lows you have from right where the drag guard meets the forefoot, all the way up here to the base of the tongue, it is pretty thick jersey material. Now under that tongue, you have some Nike sphering here with some TPU braided mesh under here. Now that is to allow a little more airflow because that jersey material is a little bit thicker. However, the rest of the shoe breathes so well that it is a nice addition, but overall, even with that thicker material, the shoe overall still breathes pretty well. And the majority of that breathability comes from the medial and lateral sides here, the midfoot, which is kind of like a modified Leno weave. Now, if you look at it under the microscope, you'll see the main strands almost look like kind of like a hairy spider almost. They're a little more haphazardly constructed. And like I said, going horizontal, you saw I just have those TPU weaves in there. So it is a pretty strong weave. However, in my mind, it's the horizontal TPU that's carrying the majority of the load. But if you look on the inside of that, it is also reinforced with some synthetic leather as well as some other felt paneling from the inside of the shoe. So even though the vertical strands of that weave aren't as tightly wound, it, it still does have pretty good durability, especially because it's encased all around. But the most interesting part about the uppers is you look here on the lateral forefoot, you got the same weave. However, it is shellacked in this lacquer. So it's the same stuff. You look at the microscope, it looks all shiny, kind of everything's just kind of congealed together. Now I wish I could say that was in response to my video about the Jordan 37 and how to modify them to stop the ripping of the Leno weave. However, you know, the concept of these shoes are, are made, you know, pretty much last year. So I think maybe that was just a happy accident and just because you have a lot more reinforcing on any part of the weave that your forefoot might come in contact with. And last but not least, looking at the lace line, I love and hate the lace line. I love the reinforcement. I love how the top reinforcement goes all the way around the heel counter. I think that does give your ankle a really good lockdown in the shoe. I had zero heel slippage in these. What I don't like about it is, is it's so reinforced, but right here in the ball of the foot where you'd be pivoting the most, that's where the biggest cutout is. So I know that's to allow more forgiveness for your foot, which we'll talk about in a second. However, in terms of pivoting power, I would like just a little more of that reinforcement right there because the rest of the lace line is just top notch. And if you look at these on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, this is some synthetic leather here on the drag guard. The Dremel hover just bites right through it. It gets all the way into that jersey material underneath of it. And it kind of makes an indentation on the jersey material too. So if you're gonna take these outdoors, just get ready for them to really start wearing down. And even on an indoor court, I think if you're really building up a lot of heat and you're really hitting those hezzy steps really hard, dragging your toes, you may start wearing through these. And so that brings me to the first leg of the universal rating system for the Jordan 37 low. Remember the universal rating system is eight categories, five points each, total out of 40. For the first one, containment, I am gonna give these a three out of five. I, I really think for somebody that's shorter and doesn't put a ton of force into the shoe, the containment is fine. If you are a taller player, Player, though bringing down a bigger lever arm or the ball of your foot is a little bit narrow and you have kind of room to move around in there you're gonna have to cinch down those laces so hard to get any bit of containment so I would say they're not elite they're not terrible either kind of right in the middle there for the right player now getting into the midsole teardown I've really come to love this combination of the bottom loaded molded shank kind of in that Delta pattern double stack zoom air in the forefoot and you got a little bit of Phylon and then formula 23 in the back it is pretty soft foam but remember it is in case around the entire heel. So that will give you a little bit more bounce back on that heel. However, it's still not as lively as some other foams. However, if you look at it on the bounce and elasticity test, I got 34 centimeters of bounce from the heel. Now that captured some of the Phylon and some of the Formula 23. That's more than I thought I was gonna get. Now remember when I do that, I cut the upper of the shoe, but I do not cut the heel counter. So all that foam was still contained. I think as that foam starts to wear down though, that bounciness in the rear foot's gonna start to go down. However, if you look at the four foot, I got 45 centimeters on the bounce test, which has just blown everything else out of the water, even the Curry Flow 10. So as you'll see in the accelerometer test, where we get to test the shank as well, if you use these shoes in the right way, you can get some pretty crazy bounce and some pretty crazy launch out of these. And for the second leg of the universal rating system, bounce and shock absorption, I'm giving them a four out of five for bounce, because if you use them in the forefoot and with that shank, I mean, 
they are absolute rocket ships. However, for shock absorption, I'm giving them a three and a half out of five, just because that Formula 23 number one isn't as lively and isn't as shock absorbing on an outdoor court. It's very good on indoor courts. And also the durability of it over time in the heel, I think might start to wane. So you might have this really good shock absorbing in the forefoot. So that's why I had to take kind of one and a half points off them just because over the life of the shoe, it might not be as good as when they're right out of the box. Now getting into the outsole tread, this is that same modified topographical pattern, a little bit of offset waving, as well as a little bit of modified herringbone in there. It's a little more of a flat type herringbone with different angles going a little more jagged and some of them a little more gentle. Now this is a two pod tread, obviously because you have the big shank in the middle plus the four foot zoom air units. And if you look at the durometer of the rubber, the black comes in at 15.8 and the white comes in at 22.5. Now the interesting thing is, is both the black and the white rubber in the four foot were much harder rubber compounds than in the rear foot. So as you can see, everything about this shoe is meant to be used on the forefoot. The heel of it is kind of meant to be an afterthought almost. And so if you look at the 37 lows in terms of speed, grip, and launch, you look at it on the accelerometer, this is really interesting. These shoes have higher amplitudes with each step. So that shank is able to engage so well when you're on the balls of your foot. Because when I'm doing the accelerometer test, I'm sprinting from the free throw line to the baseline. So up on the balls of my foot, pivoting on the balls of my foot. And if you look, the amplitudes on the magnitude scale on the accelerometer also peak way higher than shoes like the Daymate. Other shoes with more flexible shanks or more flat tread profiles. Now the interesting thing is the Jordan 37 Low did spend a little bit more time at standstill or the stopping position when I was changing directions at the baseline versus some other shoes kind of like the Dame Certified. Because it's a full length tread pattern, you can pretty much grip from anywhere and the shoe kind of acts a little more uniformly on turns, it gets that turn quicker. Whereas with a 37 low, because the containment isn't so good in the forefoot, you spend more time kind of centering your gravity before you go back the other direction versus once you actually take that next step. So you're just trading something, right? You're getting more speed out of the 37 because of the bounce and the shank. And that also really rings true on the 37 low speed ratio, where it comes in at a 2.63, that's even higher than the Curry Flow 10, which I kind of thought was one of the most elite shoes in terms of speed ratio. So in a straight line, these things are absolute rockets. It's just when you go to make turns on them, if the containment isn't there, if your foot isn't kind of the right shape for the shoe, that's where you're gonna lose speed. And so that kind of brings me to the speed section of the universal rating system. And for that, I'm gonna give them a four out of five in terms of speed, because the only thing holding them back, like I said, is the containment on the turns. And if you look at it on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper, I mean, almost two millimeters of damage on a two millimeter tread depth. Now on the forefoot, you're only getting a millimeter of damage. However, with how great the grip of these are on an indoor surface, they are really gonna meld into that court and you are gonna start to build up some heat in that outsole tread. And so that brings me to number five on the universal rating system and that is durability. In the 37 lows, I'm gonna give a two out of five for because number one, the upper drag guard really doesn't protect against much. That Formula 23, I have some reservations about. And the outsole tread, like I said, you're gonna get great grip out of it, but you are sacrificing on that durability. Now getting into the fit of the 37 lows, I was pleasantly surprised with my little bit of a wider foot. If you are a narrow foot, medium foot, or even a 2E foot on these, you can pretty much go true to size. However, if you are a narrow foot, aren't putting any orthotics in here and really want a lot of containment, you may want to consider going down a half size just because of the profile of this. If, if this wasn't here, I'd just say just go true to size. However, that one part just concerns me a little bit in terms of containment. So uh, kind of think about that when you're buying them. And so for number six and seven on the universal rating system, comfort and support, I am giving them a four out of five for both of them because right out of the box, these are very comfortable shoes. Break-in is pretty much nil on them. The support from the shank and the air in the forefoot is really nice. Like I said, the only thing taking it down a point is the back of the heel, but if you put an orthotic in there, I still think they would be fine even in the long term. But in terms of the all important playability, I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this. If you're someone that plays up on the balls of their foot, puts a real premium on bounce on the balls of their foot, someone that wants to get a jump shot over somebody else, or someone that can make really quick moves with their forefoot. I found these to be so nimble feeling on the ground. I will say they do take about maybe five to 10 minutes to get used to the forefoot zoom air unit. Now I didn't notice that in the Jordan 37, but on the 37 low, I, I did notice it just took me a few minutes to kind of get used to that 
that, that feeling of maybe just even potential instability, I would just say for step backs, side steps, they're just so easy just to kind of pop up off the ground. Um, I, I really think these are a better shoe than the 37. They play better, they feel better, and they still breathe just as well as the 37s do. They really do come to life on an indoor court. So I, like I said, on an outdoor court, I don't think these are really good at all. Um, but if you're looking for kind of the ultimate quick, really fast, straight line speed shoe, but also really nimble shoe in the air, these are really where it's at. And so in terms of playability, I'm gonna give them a four out of five. Like I said, the only thing I don't like is the containment right in the ball of the foot. So like I said, you do have to get used to that for a little bit. And like I said, for some players, especially heavier players, um, you just may wanna throw an orthotic in there to kind of stiffen that up or, or something else. But everything else about them in terms of playability is just on point. But of course, love to know your thoughts. Are you looking to pick a pair up of the 37 lows or are you just kind of waiting for the 38s to come down the pipe? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see the older sibling to the 37 lows, the Jordan 37 going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.